So shall we get started? Am I? Can can you hear me? Will I? Will I is this? Is the microphone working? Maybe if it isn't. Yeah, good. Cool. Um, so this is this is. I, I want this to be the sort of boff where I say as little as possible, because um, this is my first DevConf, and um, I've not been doing Java packaging very long either. So I think the less I say, the more everyone else will get out of it. Um, and I think. Um, so I put, to, I put together really one slide, other than the title slide, of things people suggested we, we might want to talk about. Um, so I, I also I put those, those things on a Gobby document on Gobby Debian org. So maybe if someone here could sort of scribble down what people say on that Gobby document, and then we'll have a, a record afterwards of um, kind of what was said. Um, so, um, kind of, those were the things that, that people sort of wanted to talk about. The reason why I proposed this boff was that I foolishly tried to package a Java application. Um, <laughs> and uh, actually, when I, well, I, was, I was about to start doing this, I emailed um, Russ, and he said, yeah, I tried to do that, and it was just too much like hard work. Um, and my experience also was that it was too much like hard work. Um, so I have, uh, you know, I ended up with 10 libraries to package. Um, um, and, and then, then the, 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 so I got all of those and, and packaged them and then I never quite finished the app itself because, you know, so I had got so far behind and everything else. And I think it struck me that there must be a better answer to this. Um, because, you know, one of the things on, on that list is a, a problem with manpower. And if everyone who tries to comes to think, well, I've got this Java app I use, it would be handy if it was in Debian, they start off on this process and lose the will to live halfway down it. Um, then we have this kind of vicious cycle where each new potential contributor gets stuck, loses heart. So their application never makes it into Debian, which is a problem. They probably go off and do other things, and we have fewer few of those dependent libraries packaged up. So the next person who comes along, there aren't so many libraries, so they have to bought package more libraries. This sort of this sort of self-reinforcing problem. And I think that Maven actually makes this worse. Um, I've come to loathe Maven more than I loathe almost anything else. And I think as a distribution, it, it presents a number of problems for us. Um, Ignoring the fact that this default mode of operation is not terribly secure, you know, it'll download any old garbage over HTTP and compile it and install it on your system for you. Um, I think it encourages uh, upstream authors to be kind of slapdash in their approach to um, dependencies, the libraries they depend on. There's no, if your expectation is either everyone will just install the binary jar, which is a common model, or they'll just run Maven and it'll download everything. You don't care about using um, sort of popular libraries in the way that someone writing a C application might. Um, there's, there's a lack of clear, clear sort of versioning. You know, you declare a version, version dependency or some other library and 
or maybe you wanted a particular API that's provided by a particular version, or maybe you just pick the latest one when you happen to write your application. And then when we come along, we don't want 50 different versions of some Java library. So we have, often you end up trying to have to pretty much guess where the API has changed in the versions of a, a Java library. So that makes the whole process harder as well. Um, yeah, so I think this sort of whole uh, approach that Maven encourages is really unhelpful for us as a distribution. Um, and I wonder if, we, if there's anything we can do to try and ameliorate that. And Andrew, is Andrew here? Hi. Uh, Andrew's um, Google Summer of Code project, I think, might be a kind of starting point for that, because well, do you want to say what you did? There's a microphone. <laughs> Tell us what you did. Save me talking. Uh, hello. Is this on? Uh, for my project, I was creating a, a uh, Maven plugin to actually build a uh, Java application and iteratively um, build all of its dependencies and dump it all into a Maven repo a repository. So, I mean, it struck me that this sort of because we have we have MH Make, which is pretty good, but it's not it's not it's not perfect. And I wondered if we could some modification of that approach, that sort of automatic finding all the dependencies and building them, we could use to make the job of someone who comes along with their new Java application they want to get into Debian and makes the job of sorting out all of the libraries and getting them into distributable form easier. And that might solve some of our problems, both in terms of manpower um, and make people's lives easier in terms of getting Java applications into Debian. Someone say something. Disagree with me. Excellent. Uh, Matthew, I'm so glad that you brought this up. Um, could you please explain to the group how you propose that uh, Debian support uh, Maven 3 coexistence with Maven 2? No. Uh, I don't have an answer to that question. Um, so, as I said, I'm not sure I'm the right person to be coordinating this. I sort of did it because I thought it would be a useful discussion to have. But I'm not, I'm not an experienced user of Java. I don't really develop Java at all. Um, it's just I had a need to use a Java application for, for, for my work and you know the, the Shibboleth team already has everything except the Java app in Debian and it would be useful if we could get the Java app in as well. So that's sort of where I come to this from. So if you ask me kind of detailed questions about different versions of Maven, I'm not the person to answer them, you know. Uh. Alright, so so I'm Tony Maxwell, for those of you who don't know me, and I've been on the Java team for a while, and I, and I have to, um, I also have to claim <laughs> certain ignorance of some of the inner workings. I mean, we have, we have the Maven repo helper, Maven Debian helper, um, and it's a little bit of black magic um, for me, even having worked with them for quite a while, to, to get those to work. And, and I think uh, we're at the point where to support Maven 3, where we really need to back up, and retool, and reevaluate this. So. We're talking about a couple, there's, there's a few issues, right? Is one, do, and I think, so my answer is, we already have to support, we, we have to support Maven 2 and Maven 3 build systems if we're going to continue to distribute Java apps within Debian. Yeah. And, I, you know, coming to this conference, actually, I didn't, I didn't want to put it up there for topics of discussion, but some, t some days I feel like we should distribute a JDK and we should distribute a, a Maybe Tomcat, maybe, if we're willing to do the security support. And then helpers to allow folks to basically run their Java apps on top of Debian because this, this cascading effect of, of every library that anyone has ever used is arduous. It takes um, a simple, what's, uh, there's some open CA, some, some nice CA tool, and uh, it had 45 reverse dependencies. And we don't know how many of those also had reverse dependencies. So the interesting thing is, of course, the problem isn't really uh, numerically all that terribly different from the world of C-based applications. The distinction is that most of the libraries that matter to people in the world of C applications grew up sort of through the history of Unix. And um, lots of people over a lot of time have thought about what's the right way to package libraries. You know, we transition to shared libraries, we figured out shared library versions. There's just a lot of infrastructure that's grown up with the application 
community. And so new people coming in who want to write a C app sort of have this body of you know, sort of well-engineered infrastructure that's grown up over time. And the problem that I've seen is a lot of folks that are writing uh, Java apps, while the resulting apps are really cool, um, and the one that Tom and I sort of got entangled in is Open Rocket, and, you know, really cool rocket design and simulation program, but OMG, you know, reverse dependency list just about killed us. Um, then, of course, Keith and I, you know, our rocket ground station software is all... Uh, written in Java these days, so this is why I'm here and why I care about this. But uh, my observation has been that just in the world of people writing Java apps, there's there, there's nowhere near the sort of uh, focus on distribution, distributability, packageability, and all of that because the model really is, oh, you know, here's the URL to download the jar, just run it. And um, I, in fact, have given up. And for Open Rocket, I'm now delivering an installer that knows where to go get the latest jar and download it and, you know, wrap it so that it can be invoked. And gee, you know, it works and my life's gone back to being less painful, but it, it feels like, um, feels like treason somehow. It's, you know, this, this isn't how this is supposed to work. It, it's actually, I'm sorry to, to hog the mic, but it's actually more complicated than this because um, we have, upstreams that have this post open source attitude that they will just shove bits onto GitHub that build with Maven and they're happy when they create a POM XML that will build their thing. And we're, you're actually lucky to have reasonable version numbers and releases. And if you have version numbers and releases, there really isn't much consistency in Java developers using semantic versioning sure. to actually represent ABI changes, Absolutely. right? So this makes Tony's problem even worse because not only do you have the large graph of reverse depends, but each project has a reverse depends on different versions of libraries and there's almost no path to resolve that, except hand-to-hand -hand combat every time. Yeah, the way, that, the way that I resolve this in Java packaging is actually to have a, a sed script that runs over my source code and renumbers the library, I renames the library every time I make an ABI change. And so I literally edit the name of the library and append a number, an ABI version number, to the library name and ship multiple libraries. I mean, I looked all through the documentation. Is there really no ABI versioning in Java at all? Who could build a library system like that in the year 2000? Well, I'll just, just comment. I gave a, I gave a talk on this in, in 2012, and it's, it's this, you know, uh, so Gosling's dream has come true. Write it once, run it anywhere, right? And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but so the point is, is basically once it builds, I, I mean, that's one of the issues I think with, with struggles with Java as a language. Once you get it to build, you know, that, that's it. That's what Maven is there to solve is, hey, let me be able to reproducibly build this at some snapshot in time. And it, there is no uh, conception of, let me have just one copy of this library on my system and move it forward. Um, I'm sorry, and, and, and allow, allow time to move forward and I'm let me upgrade to, that. I'm supposed to wrap my arms around the whole system and build it all together. Um, well, I think, I think it's more of a container view where basically, hey, this app runs with this set of libraries, and that's good. I, w I just wanted to comment that uh, at my company, we definitely have tried to fight this battle some, and we have given up and basically just each application ships its entire set of dependencies because disk space is no longer the premium that it used to be. Runtime uh, requirements are also not that bad. You can make an argument for security issues. I, I'm not sure where we stand on that, but I, I see a lot of value in the package the JDK and package Tomcat and do nothing else uh, approach to things because it's, it's a lot of effort that's when people get down and use these things in anger, they're going to have to find alternative approaches just to get their job done. So, 
It's kind of a council of despair, though, isn't it? Yeah. How do we solve the Java packaging problem? We don't. We well, give up. And actually, the, 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 the security thing that someone alluded to a moment ago is an issue. You know, you look at. I, I, so I looked at this application I was trying to package, and it see on some SSL library that some PhD student had written back in the day and he was, you know, he's going to get it into uh, Apache Commons Honest Gov and yet it had got forgotten and here it is, you know, doing SSL in something that is a security relevant application and, you know, this sort of Maven encourages you to just say, well, I, this is at, at one point I'll just carry on using it till the cows come home and if someone finds a security bug in it, well, oops. Uh, one kind of related minor thing we might want to consider is I believe uh, past m few weeks Sonotype has now enabled uh, support for HTTPS for downloads from the main repository. So it might be handy for our tools to, for people to switch to use that as a default because it's not the upstream default yet I don't think for Liningen or Maven or whatever. I suspect for Liningen it probably will be soon if it's not already but I don't know about Maven. So. Well, Rob brought up a, uh, a really good point, which is uh, Linegan is basically the build tool built on top of Maven for closure applications. And I, I happen to be a closure developer, and I really enjoy closure. And so I started talking with some people about, well, what, what should we do for Jesse? Well, what we really ought to do is get Linegan into Jesse. And we started down the trail of doing that, and then you know, then Emmanuel brought up the Java 8 transition, which you have in your slide, which is a big issue. Uh, we tripped over the Maven 3 thing, which is another issue, um, and then the reverse depends for closure to get Linegan to build. But I think that this this problem isn't just Java; it's also uh, JVM languages. So this comes up with closure, it comes up with JRuby, potentially Scala, and and other things as well. And I would guess that many of those Java languages are probably using Maven or, in the case of Clojure, their own build tool, which is sort of a, a thing, on, a layer on top. And I don't have any answers, but it certainly, you know, Rob brings up a good point. Okay, I certainly don't want to. Okay, one, one comment, and then I'll sort of, I don't want to hog the mic. I guess, I guess my, my look, I mean, I realize this is we could move in a lot of places with this talk. I mean, I, I don't want. I would like uh, feedback, um, and I think uh, Debian Java is the best place to provide it, um, certainly to folks who aren't here, but feedback on how we continue to make Java within Debian relevant to our users, what's useful. It sounds, you know, sounds like supporting um, JVM runtimes, development tools possibly. I mean, I think uh, applications gets pretty hairy pretty quickly. Writing up policies for how to package Java applications. Right? Just telling us how to do it. Right now, the, the instructions are, the instructions are, you know, make sure all of your libraries, yeah, the, the current Java instructions are to make sure all of your libraries in Debian and then build your application on the top of the Java libraries in Debian. And given the ABI issues, that's clearly just not a supportable plan. Um, Open Rocket is, a, is an example here. We have, you know, BDL tried to get all of the libraries in Debian and the ABI instability across versions was a disaster. Um, I've tried to do the sim same thing and ship, you know, one library with multiple applications and I, every time I rev the ABI, I just, I can't do that. Um, Having a policy down that says the Java, the Java distribution policy is you package all the libraries except for this tiny little set of ones which are guaranteed to not change in ABI that we will supply, package them in this way, put them in these directories, and then your application will work. And just abandon the notion of having common shared Java libraries in the distribution. Oh, that's quite a radical suggestion. I mean, I don't th I'm not. I think it might be the right answer. I mean, you know, because current, uh, currently our policy, uh, the Java policy is like the C policy. If, the, if you, there's a library, we should have one version on the system, because you know, uh, as as you pointed out, we we solved all these problems in C years ago, um, and it's clearly the right way to do it. But maybe that that that's a fight we can't have with the Java world because <laughs> they don't give a monkeys. We, we don't have we don't have shared libraries in Java. But does this mean we would be Mike? But does this mean um, are we going to insist on building all the jars from source? 
or uh, I not. Think, I, th I think we so, have to, because I mean the whole point of free software is that you distribute yeah, I, the, I the assume preferred would, form for modification. But you wonder if you're starting to talk about. Uh, uh, okay, I just wanted to make sure that's still what we were talking about. I mean, in, in, what, in what sense are you, you know, if you're not building from source, in what sense do you have the preferred form for modification? Uh, I think, I think, sorry, do, do speak. Right, so I'm a newbie. Uh, when I first started to learn Java, I used Linux to do it. And um, uh, I got uh, in the habit of adding dependencies right with my package. And I really thought that was the way to go, because uh, reading about Maven, um, was just too complex for me to uh, want to. I didn't have the time to do it. Uh, I didn't have the knowledge to set up Maven and stuff like that. And the wiki page was uh, really um, too complex for me even to touch upon. So that was my issue. Okay. I just wanted to comment. I mean, I, I, I do think we do always want to build from source. <laughs> No question asked, but I, I think there's something to this idea of, you know, if you have a if you have this, this set of libraries that belong to your app and maybe not to a lot of other apps, um, you know, maybe at some point they'll be promoted, but maybe there's room for us to distribute some jars, provided they build from source, that, you know, that are part of your class path that aren't part of the system's class path. Um, so I'd welcome discussion on the list about, you know, possibly. It's not really relaxing Java policy, but it's changing Java but policy. But just changing yeah, Java policy change. to support this, because I, I think we're, it, for me personally, I think it's untenable right now to continue yeah. um, trying to support this, and because invariably you're, you know, you're, uh, well, you're, you're robbing someone, right? Because because the, one of the issues we run into with the Java team is we're, we're 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 pushing new. We don't have visibility of, of everything, right? And so we're trying to. Uh, we need a, we need upstream version X of package foo. Well, look, that needs version Y of bar, and we push that, and it turns around. If you don't build all the reverse depends, you know this is a so our, our next uh, summer of code project. I would love a tool that just said, all right, I'm I'm, I'm proposing uploading this. Build every single reverse depends, um, because. Uh, Invariably, then and then there's a we have to quickly we have failed to build from source and then we end up spending a lot of time just trying to and then essentially now we're porting and we're managing those ABI changes within the team and that's the team is not staffed for it. The, the a problem that would arise from this approach so at the moment you know if we find a security problem in a particular Java library, well it's easy we fix that Java library and. You know, away you go. If, if, so if we're going to start shipping entire apps, we're going to have to have some sort of metadata in the app that, dis, uh, you know, in the deb file or somewhere that describes every the, the versions of all the libraries that are contained within that app. Both, and, and partly so this is a problem in the, a security issue, we can fix that, but also then that will give us the, the tools to say, well, actually, you know, we're shipping 20 apps, all of which contain this same library, Maybe at that point we should start thinking about taking that library into its own uh, package. How do we plan to deal with the issue of uh, the different packages depending on different versions of the same dependency? Uh, do we allow them to be co-installed? Do we? The, the problem I, I see is that if you allow them to co be co-installed, uh, you easily end up with five million copies of the same library, because uh, some some program won't be use, won't ever be changed, or the next CSV be changed to use the new, new version, and yeah, that would be the ideal packaging way, but yeah. So is the answer to that we need to push back on upstreams more to make them produce higher quality code? Do do we have that power? <laughs> we can try, but I think you know. I think this is the kind of the crux of the problem is it's unrealistic to expect we can change the Java habits that are there, and it is really frustrating. Hold on a sec. Um, I, I I'm torn because on the one hand I. I see this idea of, well, let's just 
ship open JDK and and then go to town. Uh, the thing that scares me, um, among other things like security, is that this is kind of breaking our relationship with our users. It means that you can't just say up get source and get something that you expect. Um, I'm wondering if, I know this sounds kind of unrealistic, but I'm wondering if there's a way that we could, uh, you know, with a policy change like insisting that every Java library that we use has some sort of auto package test thing in it that we basically have some magical tool that will like in, examine the ABI of Java libraries, download every uh, version and automatically determine when the ABI changes and then, you know, help us re do this basically automatically so humans don't have to be involved. That would be cool. Um, so I, I just, I keep reminding myself that the fundamental problem is a clash of worldviews. And that the objectives of what appears to be sort of the center of the behavioral model in the Java community is not the set of objectives that we have had traditionally in the Debian project. With respect to how things get packaged, how they get distributed, you know, the notion of never shipping more than one copy of a given piece of source code built on the system as a shared library or something. That, that worldview, I mean, you know, as Keith's pointing out, the, the situation with, with the support for ABI versioning, you know, you just look and there are things that just aren't there. And the reason they aren't there isn't because those people are stupid, it's because they have a different set of objectives and that wasn't necessary to meet the objectives they had. Is that good for us? No. So in answer to your question, is this something we should be pushing back on upstream about? Hell yes, because you know, I, I think that the model that we have evolved of sort of how we care for source code and how we deal with security issues and all of these things that we use in Debian is is immensely powerful. Do I think we actually have the power to you know, drive change in the Java community? No, I really don't. And so where does that leave us? It, it leaves us having this kind of a discussion in a buff. It's a, we think we know what they ought to do to make the world a better place, and we have absolutely no idea how to actually affect that change. So where does that leave us? Well, as you, you use the word magic in there, some magic tool. I mean, it would be nice to have some magic tool, but I don't know how we make that come into existence. This uh, there is a tool called uh, Clear, a C L I R R, that will do some of this. In other packaging, uh, other packaging problems that I've come across, um, one of the other areas we ha where we have a similar problem is shipping multiple versions of GCC targeting different architectures. Um, I build a cross compiler environment for ARM that's in the archive. Um, the way that we resolve that in Debian today is we actually have the the, uh, the build process have a, a build dependency on a source package. Would it be appropriate for us to allow in the archive innumerable different variants of the same of source package for different libraries and, no, and have perhaps a Debian specific numbering of the ABIs of each of those packages so that when you build your package, you're saying my package needs um, this library and I need this I need this source version of that library, and as part of building your package, you incorporate the source that source version of your library and build a jar from that, um, and make it a very lightweight process to upload a new source version of a particular library. And it's like, well, I know it's you know it's not it's, and 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 probably not make the ABI. Uh, uh, any sort of monotonic progression in time. Just say, yeah, I downloaded this new program. It used this random version of this library. It's not already in the archive. What's in the archive doesn't work for me. I'm just going to upload a new source version of this package and give it another number. Um, that, would at le that would have a, a couple of, uh, of effects. It would allow you to share the same source library across several packages that you maintain if it's the same version. It would also allow us to identify rapidly locations in the archive where we have security problems and we can upload security fixes and it would be a tremendous burden on the Java team to actually go through and say, oh, we have 47 versions of libssl used by different Java programs. I have to go and do the same security fix to all 47 versions. It would be a mechanical process at least because you would, the code would presumably be effectively the same everywhere, but it would be a larger burden. But at least it would allow me to upload the sources that I needed to construct my package to make sure that we had sources that corresponded to the binaries in the archive. Yeah, I, 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 did, you, did you have a question? You were waving your hand earlier. 
<laughs> I'm just going to comment quickly while I'm carrying the mic over here. That's a little bit of a Maven. That's that's a kind of a getting closer to the Maven model. We'd have our own repository of lots of versions, possibly the same library. But I like that. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking that I don't, I don't know that we have uh, enough leverage to be able to, you know, push. We have a limited amount of leverage, but I think it's very good for us. We may have a be in a reasonable decision to be have some stronger influence over time. And there probably are plenty of upstreams that follow versioning processes that are just fine. And so for those, we might not have too much trouble handling things the normal way. I suspect that uh, given the way so the JVM works, we, there may be tooling ways we can help. But I, it sounds to me like maybe over time what we need is a some sort of a hybrid approach possibly where you know there's the obvious way we want things done. Uh, and we try to encourage people to do it that way, but we have an escape hatch so that for you know packages that upstreams that aren't following that model, we still have a way to address it and in particular be able to handle the security issues carefully, that kind of thing. All right, if no one else, I'm going to bring up a couple other topics. Just come, come, before you do, um, yes. just to try and sort of summarize that a bit to make sure. I've understood what everyone said. I, mean, I think we're going to have to go back and talk about this on Debian Java because we're essentially proposing a policy change. And we've sort of two alternatives, I think, have been suggested. There's the alternative where we ship OpenJDK. That's about it. Um, uh, there's the alternative where we carry on with our current approach, which I think is clearly unsustainable. And there's an approach where we, we, we move towards the point where if you want to ship a, an app in Debian, it's okay for that app to be built using a pile of libraries rather than having the sort of, you know, we'll have one copy of this library on the system instead. You know, either we have some, some sort of mechanism with different source packages in the archive that you incorporate in your build, or something like that, where you, you have an app that definitely builds from source, but it comes as one giant jar rather than, you know, with its own class path. Um, and I, my feeling is that latter approach is better for our users. You know, it means for common applications, people will be able to use it on Debian, and it, I think it will make our lives tractable <laughs> in a way that our current approach doesn't. Just a quick. So the, that was just a straw man saying that we only should be. Yeah, no, sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I think we need a some sort of combination between those two because. Um, there is one case where you have just a pure Lava, Java library and then can just incorporate everything and it magically, magically finds some, something somewhere else. But there is also a case of uh, libraries just happening to, ha uh, or programs just happening to have some features in Java and um, in, in, in my, my case, it, it, they just incorporate the code from Apache Commons and just build it and do the jar and be done with that. Um, so uh, what, what that package does right now is to use the normal packaging way. Um, and if we get to the, to the source code solution, you need to invent some mechanism to, to get the source code into that uh, sure. program. So, um, yeah, I think it's not a good way to, uh, to uh, change the complete way, but sure. to no, have, a, have a mixture between the two. So, I, I think, shall we leave the, the sort of dependency hell question for now? Because we've, you know, we've used most of our time, and there, were, there are some other issues up there. So, um, Tony, do you want to say something? I think you were going to. I just wanted to bring, I mean, we, we just kind of spitballed on the list to figure sure. out what will we talk about during this. I think the dependency hell question is the core question for uh, Debian, uh, Java within Debian, so I'm glad that we spent a lot of time on that. Um, uh, I just wanted to bring up, uh, well, so Java 8 transition, I can't give a good overview of that, um, other than the main struggle there seems to be that, you know, wouldn't it be great if we had a JDK that built across all of our architectures? <laughs> um, and just just one, uh, or two, or even just three would be great, actually. Well, I did know if we could drop a microphone. Sorry. Just. Well, 
in the, in the spirit of getting to all the architectures, it would be a lot easier if we only had to support one version of OpenJDK. Absolutely no argument there. Um, I think I think when we brought up the Java 8 transition, I mean, I don't, uh, my gut feeling is for Jesse, we, I, I don't, I don't suspect it's going to happen, uh, maybe, if, if folks really want it to happen and everyone gets really super busy. Um, but, I mean, we have two months, right? Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't look tractable it doesn't. here unless someone is suddenly going to have a burst of enthusiasm on that right. front. Um, but, you know, let, let, let's, let's talk about it on the list. Um, it, it's what remains to be done? I, I just wanted to know uh, what remains to be done for the Java 8 transition. I haven't been following it closely. Yeah, the main problem, as far as I followed it, is that some random package does not build with JDK 8, maybe because there was some some Java doc issues or some code issues or whatever. So uh, I think Emmanuel did. Uh, file a pile of bugs, but I'm not sure whether it's all all bugs existing. Part of the answer to your question can be found in the Debian Java list archives. Uh, Emmanuel Buch has has uh, created a, a a bug, I think, a meta bug to track Java transition things. Um, some of them are, you know, kind of benign, like there's just one little Java library, a leaf library that needs to be updated. But there are significantly more complicated cases like JRuby. I've taken a couple of stabs at, at updating and packaging JRuby. Um, but that's tricky because there's native bits, there's FFI bits, um, there's, you know, it used to, and I've been working with Upstream, because I know Upstream, um, to get some of the binary blobs out of their thing. But it, still, we have to, I mean, it's a, it's a really tricky package to do. We have the problem that they have gems, which is a whole other thing. And um, so there are some really tricky things, for example, to, to get this done. To do it right, what we really want to do is we want to get an updated version of JRuby in the archive that builds against uh, JDK 8, um, and then that'll solve that particular problem. But that, that's, that's an example of how the transition is going to be tricky. Oops, yeah. So, um, okay, to be continued, Java 8 transition talk. Um, <laughs> The, uh, so with Tomcat, um, I just want to I wanted to list, list this one explicitly because we've gotten to the uh, point with Tomcat. It's a little bit of a deviation from the Debian model uh, in terms of supporting stable, where we're no longer backporting. Uh, so we no longer backporting everything to say Tomcat 6, 6.035 instead. Um, in fact, we're actually proposing uploading 6.041 to old stable. And I'm talking to Holger about that. And so we reached this point. Uh, I just kind of wanted to, to bring it up and, and let folks know we reached this point with this, the security team needs these updates. Um, and we're currently, the way we're staffed with manpower, we, it, 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 it seems less dangerous to go to the new version. Um, but, but that feels odd to me, having been in, you know, that's, that hasn't been the Debian way in the past. Sure. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that up as a topic and, and maybe uh, hear comments um, and ideas for that. And one other thing, because I'm not going to, I've been hogging the mic so much, but in terms of getting more contributors, those in the room and those listening to the stream, we make it sound so bleak and all. It's, <laughs> I think it's a blast. It's fun. These are interesting problems. These are some real uh, kind of gnarly engineering problems. Uh, plenty of meat to sink your teeth into. Maybe Andrew wants to comment on that. <laughs> um, so if you're interested, Debian Java, you know, at list.debian.org, um, please feel free. We welcome all types of contributions. There's healthy, there's a lot of sponsoring going on there. And uh, I'll let anyone else who would like to speak, please. Yeah, I mean, this business of, of um, not backporting security problems, it makes, it, it, it makes me unhappy as well. I mean, I speak from a position of massive ignorance because I, I don't use Tomcat at all. but. You know, from every other package I've maintained, you know, we always, when there's security problems, we always backport them. Um, but I guess we have to do something for our users, and in the end, if that means moving to a newer version, yeah. it's better than not fixing the bugs at all. There is precedent for it. Um, uh, 
you know, I, for a while, years ago, I used to maintain the bind packaging, you know, domain name service stuff, and there were at least two times where some issue upstream resulted in a new release and not from which it would have not been easy to backport a specific security fix. And the discussion and resulting decision sort of came down to were you, did you have a higher degree of confidence in the quality of solution you'd be delivering to our end users of trying to generate a Debian specific backporting patch, which might or might not get a lot of testing and attention, or accepting the fact that there was a large, intense, you know, uh, very technically astute community working to ensure that the new upstream version really did all the right things, and was it better for our users to just put that in? These are never easy discussions, and I would not begin to suggest that you know our stable release managers will ever be happy having to have that conversation. But uh, there certainly have been times in the past where it was clearly the right answer to just accept a new version, put it into a stable update, or put it into a backport. Depends how compatible it is as well. You know, how much how, are we going to break everyone's with bind? You know, if you break everyone's name service, they'll be quite unhappy. Uh, we, we've got five minutes, so uh, I, I think any more comments? No, ho oh, go on, go on. I, I'm just hoping that so, the, the the Gobby document now has all of this sort of stuff in it, and maybe we can get a. Or at least, maybe we can at least get an executive summary up there and then send that to the Debian Java list so the people who haven't been here, particularly, you know, we've talked about some quite radical policy changes. We should try and get a summary of this discussion on the list so everyone else can sort of. Particularly, you know, Emmanuel, who's not here, does an awful lot of work, and yeah. I'd want to keep him on board. <laughs> Absolutely, agreed. Um, I was just going to so we touch every single bullet point up there because I'm tied A. Uh, old and crufty packages. I actually I had an email exchange with Emmanuel um, regarding this, and and so the the take right now is as long as there's not an RC bug, um, we're just going to continue to bring things forward, but that we will drop leaf packages um, with extreme prejudice if they end up taking too much time. Um, it's one of these things, uh, so the, um, I, I got real active with the team in 2010, um, and that was when uh, Torsten Werner was giving his talk about the dependency hell. And uh, there was a, I think leading up probably 2008 to 2010 was maybe the heyday of Debian Java where a huge number of packages were added and there was a lot of support, perhaps maybe even some day job corporate support, I'm not sure. Um, but. Uh, one of the issues we have right now with the team is there are a lot of packages that um, the active members on the team haven't actually worked on. Bugs get filed, that's great, another way to help. You know, I, that's it's awesome. Our Thank you to all of our bugs submitters. Um, and a lot of times they come with patches too, I appreciate that. But we, you, you, get, you get a patch and then you realize, I don't even know how this build system works. I mean, it's, it's bad enough, half the packages are CDBS. Half of them are dead helper, half of them are maven, half of them are ant, and then half of them are super homegrown. Um, so, uh, so, and maybe we, well, I, I just want to kind of share that as part of this boff is that, uh, at least in private email, we kind of agreed, okay, as long as they're not, we're not going to proactively look for packages to call, but uh, I think the count now is about 780 packages that our Java team maintained. And um, that's, uh, for the size, I mean, it's hard to judge the size of the team, but um, that's touching a fair number of packages every week, I think, yeah. for folks. Um, and also, quick, well, we're right at the thing. Thank you very much, Matthew, for organizing this and getting us together. Well, thank you all for meaning I didn't have to stand here and sort of talk all afternoon. Um, any, more, any more last thoughts okay. from anyone? I'm interested in the reproducible builds effort, and one of the things that uh, is on the list of uh, things that aren't reproducible are uh, timestamps in jars and timestamps in Javadoc generated documentation. Uh, would there be any real objection if we made these, uh, or if we attempted to make these deterministic based on like the timestamp of the change log? No, I don't think so. That's, uh, that's, okay. Yeah, go for it. Just engineering time. Yeah. Right, well, I think we're out of time now, so thank you all for coming. Um, I think it's been quite useful. And um, we'll have a discussion on, on Debian Java about some of these ideas uh, in due course. Cool.